In this video, we're going to be talking about cores, that's cross-origin resource sharing. And if you've ever run into one of those annoying errors in the browser that says something like blocked by cores policy, that's what we're going to be breaking down today. So we're going to cover what cores actually is, why we have it, why it exists, how it works under the hood, which kind of headers are sent, and then how to actually fix cores errors properly. So let's start with why it exists. So back in the early days of the World Wide Web, things were a little bit crazy from a security point of view. So if you opened a website, for example, example.com, then that website could just make requests using JavaScript and fetch requests, fetch didn't exist, but they could make um, asynchronous fetch requests and things to any website it wanted to. So your website at example.com could communicate with a bank's website or Facebook or anything like that. And it could pull in data from any of the websites that it wanted to essentially. And that was a massive security problem. So browsers introduced something called the same origin policy. And that says if a page came from mybank.com, then it can only make requests back to mybank.com. And by same origin, it means that all three of these things must match. So it must be the same protocol, it must be HTTP or HTTPS, it must be the exactly the same domain, so mybank.com, and it must be the same port. Now for a while that was okay, because in a world of like servers where we were doing like ASP.NET pages and things like that, generally the front end was only talking to one server. But these days, if you're building applications that pull from multiple different APIs, microservices, content distribution networks, all different places, they might be on different domains or different subdomains. So you're going to need to sometimes make cross-origin requests, and that's sometimes an okay thing to do. So here's where cause comes in. Cause is a way for the server to say to the browser, this is a trusted origin. This is part of the application that you're trying to load. So let the user make this one particular cross-origin request. And so this is exactly how it works. The first thing it does is a browser makes a request to a different origin. So if it was loaded from example.com, they might make a request to api.example.com. And so the browser automatically includes an origin header in that request. You'll see it if you look in the HTTP tab of any request going out from a browser, you'll see an origin header. So in that case, the origin would be example.com. And the server receives that request and it checks the origin header. So it says, okay, this is coming from example.com. And so if I want to allow that, then I'll respond back with access control allow origin with the origin that this is. So that could be api.example.com. Then the browser sees that header and it compares it to the original origin that it sent. And if they match, then the browser will allow that cross origin request. So there's a little bit of back and forth here, but that's ultimately the way it works. Is it will send off a request to the other origin. It will check the access control allow origin header. And if things are mismatched, then the browser will block it. And that's when you see those cause errors. So even if the response data is fine, without that access control allow origin header, the browser will block it. Now there's two different types of cause request. The first one is just called a simple request. And that happens when you use safe methods like get or post. So by, the, when, by doing a simple request, you're only sending basic content types like um, application slash JSON or something like that. Now the browser adds the origin header and it sends it off and there's no extra steps involved in that at all. But the second one, which is a little bit more complicated, is called a pre-flight request. And a pre-flight request happens when you're using complicated things like puts and patches and deletes, or if you're sending different headers, like an authorization header or an API key or something like that. So if the browser wants to make a pre-flight request, then before sending the actual request, it sends a special request with an options header. And that's basically asking the server, is it okay if I go on and send this kind of request from that origin? And the server responds to that options request with the right cause headers. And if it doesn't, then the real request doesn't get sent at all. So you'll often see this in a browser, if you're debugging in the network tab, you'll see these options requests going off. They are pre-flight cause requests. Now let's talk about the important headers that you need when you're doing cores. The first one we've talked about a little bit is the access control allow origin header. And this is the big one. This is the one that tells the browser which origins are allowed to access this resource. And you can set that to a specific origin, like example.com, or you could use a wildcard in there. So if you had a server and you wanted any website to be able to load data from your server, then you could put a wildcard in the access control allow origin header, and then any website will be able to load your request. But if you're using credentials like cookies or authorization, then you can't use a wildcard. You must specify an exact origin. And that trips a lot of people up. So if you're sending credentials, if you're making an authenticated request, then you must use a specific origin in your access control allow origin header. You can't just put a wildcard in there. Another header you need to know is access control allow methods. And that tells the browser which HTTP methods are gonna be allowed. So like, you know, get, post, delete, patch, that sort of stuff. 
And that's used in those pre-flight requests, so in the options request. The browser wants to send a patch request and the server doesn't include patch in that specific header, then again, that will be blocked as well. The last one is the access control allow headers header. Um, and that lists the custom headers that you're allowed to include with a request. So if you wanted to send an authorization header or like an API key header, and the browser wants to send a custom header that's not in there, then again, it will block the request. Lastly, there's also access control allow credentials. And that is a header that tells the browser that it's okay to include cookies. Because by default, it won't necessarily send off cookies to everything. So you need to specifically tell the browser you should include the cookies when you're doing this so they can again make authenticated requests to another origin. So now let's go over some of the more common cause errors that you might see in the browser if you're building your own website. One common error to see is no access control allow origin header present. And that basically means that you tried to make a cross origin request and the server didn't respond with the correct header saying that that was an allowed origin. You also might see request header field not allowed. And that probably means that you sent a custom header, but the server didn't list it in that access control allow headers response. You also might see credentials require a specific origin. So that means that you try to send cookies with a wildcard origin, and that's something that you're not allowed to do. So that's cause in a nutshell. Remember, cause errors are caused by the browser. They're the browser telling you that you can't make a request to a specific server, but you fix them by adding headers onto the server. So ultimately, it's a back-end engineering thing to fix a cause error, but you will only see it on the front end. So cause is there to protect people on the internet. It's there to stop the internet from turning into a massive dumpster fire where any website can call any other website. And I know they can be a pain to sort out, but if you just remember the headers that matter for cause, in particular, the access control allow origin header um, and make sure that you've got that on the back end and you can test it in Postman, you can test it in curl, then that will get you a little bit further towards fixing those horrible cause errors.